Uh, so I'll open the, uh, I wouldn't the council meeting Thursday the 30th of November. Uh, welcome everybody here. And I call for apologies. I think we've got a full house with the exception of Max Scott, who's on sick leave. Uh, somebody uh, moved the confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting, please. Oh, Councillor no. Mulligan. Okay. Councillor Mulligan, Councillor Smith. I wasn't. I don't think I was there. Yes, you were. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I'll see you were there. Right. <laughs> yeah, I remember oh, you. Oh, no, that, that was a good thing. All right. Um, so I have a move and a second. I'll put the motion that the conference of the minutes stays in place. Say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, now, I call for declaration of interest if received in conflicts of interest. Have any? Now, we have some additional late, late items, and I would uh, ask that somebody. That'd be so uh, thank you. Did you want me to list them? Or, uh, September quarterly review, presentation, financial statements, and annual report. Uh, that's been moved by D. Carlton. It'll be accepted, seconded by uh, Councillor Matthews. I <laughs> say I. Uh, oh, now, we we'll we'll go to item, item 7.1 is the uh, Company Mayor's Association of Crime and Reason. <laughs> Um, I just think um, that we support it, this is what we're doing. And you can see that uh, Country Mayor's gone to a fair bit of, a fair bit of research on this. Uh, it's something that we are uh, certainly involved with. And uh, have you got a recommendation? Oh, there it is. So the recommendations are the council endorsed the following recommendations, and they are. The Greater Show I call on all members of New South Wales Parliament to commit to bipartisan support to establish a parliamentary inquiry in the report of rape and crime in all categories reported in the Bureau. It goes on. Um, the Greater Show Council calls on all members of the Parliament to commit to bipartisan support to increase spending on the police force and so forth. Uh, I might read it out. You've got it there. Um, is there any discussion on this before I? I suppose I should get a move in a second or first step. Can I just add to that mm. my report yes, that I yes, went to the yes. crime one? Did you do the, the two days? Or? You would do it there, yes. Yeah. Um, the statistics are the same that you got. It was, um, well, it was informative in the statistics and everything, and the speech was very good. However, what I want to say is it was really a beat to chest to tell you how good we are at doing cyberspace and all those other things they're doing. Okay. There were no... Um, I, I couldn't find anywhere where they were telling me that we're going to add to the policing numbers. That's, that's going to be done by this. Yeah, because yeah. we only got... The, we're below the state average. Our statistics are above the state average. Yeah, and yeah the, crime rate's really low. Really yeah. The, the the birth of this was from the community meeting out of North Star. It was the first I was aware of the home invasions on rural properties, and uh, it was about that time it started to go everywhere. Uh, there was a lot of it around Moray, a lot of it at Gunnada, and it's it's really uh, uh, much worse now than it was then. There's been a few things happening. That, uh, there's been you know a regional meeting that we've been involved with that Jeff's represented council at, and. Uh, there's been attempts. I think that one of the biggest problems we've got is the judiciary, though, and the uh, these people are being let, let out uh, with a bit of a rap on the knuckle, and that's all. Anyway, this is an attempt to try and do something about it and make um, make the government aware of what's going on. And you you understand this TikTok competition that's been going on, where you, they're photographing the crime they're, they're actually committing at the time and it's streamed live on, on social media. And there's some sort of point system, and I'm not sure. I've heard various uh, rewards for daring acts, and uh, I don't know if they're correct, but um, this is what we're up against, and it's a certain only a section of the community. They're about 15-year-olds, so that they can't really be touched that hard by the, by the law anyway. Well, uh, sorry, John. There you go. While well, we're on the... Um on the subject of crime, and I know we haven't got crime at the moment. I don't know, you might be able to say what the um, police status is in Warrialda, but we haven't got any in Bingra. Warrialda's the same, he's attached to Inverell, goes to Inverell every day. Yes, so does ours, and it's, there is going to be, 
a major issue. The other, I think I spoke about it last time. I don't know what we can do, but I do know there was a motorbike went down the main street on one wheel, you know, filming himself. That was a few weeks ago. Well, then on That's last... Quite a pal. Last night, until an accident happened. Yeah, course, like, yeah. And then on Saturday night, there was another one that decided he didn't want to drive his vehicle home, that he'd had too much to drink, and he got on, got his motorbike off and tore up and down the main street uh, on it. Uh, you have something to add, because we have spoken Yes, I did. Um, and that was at, at uh, an LEMC desktop exercise where we had a scenario where there was a bushfire um, in Warriella and played out how... Um, various agencies would respond. There was a comment when uh, somebody from the RFS said, well, no, that's where we'd call on the police to start door knocking. I think that was the um, the setup, um, Councillor Colton, and the response from the police officer there was, well, if that's today, we've got one car in Inverell. Uh, so it's a very big concern. It is a concern. So they're under police in Inverell. We're under bed because they say they're pinching... They're structuring our police, Hayden and Justin going up there. There's, there's, we've got Justin and the possum to leave another one. Yeah, I think there's a spin off. And I thought it was one. Hayden. And, have, have you got a lady police yeah. officer? Yeah, yeah. 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 Grace. Yeah. And, and so you've actually day, got two police, police but you haven't got them. For every 400 population. Yeah. Yeah. And that's worse in the country. I, I think the problem is getting them to come to the country too. It's a bit like doctors. Police don't want to leave the case. But um, should we be looking, John, at, as a council, um, some sort of association between Warrior and Bingra, separate from Inverell, so we can, um, you know, I don't know, just. See, the problem I see is that they won't operate on their own. They're not allowed no. to. They're not allowed to operate. And if you've got, if you've got. Uh, 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 What's his name? Mac, uh, Hayden. Hayden Mac at who has to go to Inverell to work, and so yeah. does Justin Moxie here. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had uh, another police officer each, they still can't operate on their own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's a safety thing. But uh, I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I think it's way, way above us. Not much good if they're in Inverell. Well, I, I don't know whether you're aware, but there's a bit of an incident in the IGA car park last Thursday. No, I'm not aware. Um, it was to do with women. And drugs, I think. Yeah. But anyway, mainly women. Um, yeah, and the young blokes were coming out, out of their cars with bloody uh, pick handles and iron really? cars. And everything. Yeah. yeah. And um, anyway, they, they they called the police, and the only police they could get was from Emberell. And, and talking about police, the bloke was off duty, but he was at the station, but he wouldn't come, couldn't come because he's not allowed on their own. They're not allowed to work on their own, no. I don't know what the outcome was of it, whether they made any arrest of it, but there's plenty of people in the whole. <coughs> yeah. Well, them. this is an attempt to rectify it if we, if we adopt this resolution. Um, Country Man's done a lot of work on it. If you go on a read through their media, yeah. it's massive. I'll, yeah. I'll recommend that. You're moving. So, we, with our concerns, rather than bringing up a council meeting, we'd be better off to take it further ourselves to someone like Adam Marshall and see what he can that's happening, and um, it's 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 as big an issue as the doctor issue. Really oh, I know, I know yeah. that, and it's the same. Comes back to the same what we we're talking about half an hour ago about jobs because mm. you know what they haven't got the people going into the police force anymore. No, and no. it comes back to jobs. You can understand why though, can't you? Oh, you can understand it's why. Not, not much of a job. It's a terrible mm. job. Mm. When they do, when they do go into the police forces. They just one little misdemeanor of the police department doesn't stand by them. No, that's what's been happening. They do not. We're seeing that at uh, quite a few. Where is it? Uh, not yeah. Ashford. Uh, Yetman. 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 There's a police officer there. He, st he stood down, and unless he resigns, until he resigns, they can't replace him. Uh, anyway, I don't know any more detail about that. Get them set up, but, uh, um, so I've got to move on. I need a second. <laughs> Councillor Colton, is there any further discussion on this? I think we'd be mad not to support this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay. I'll put the motion there in the post now. Oh, oh, yeah. right. uh, Carrie, thank you. Yeah, I've got to find the next page. 31. 31, thank you. Page 31 is you. Um, Page 31 is the officer's reports from oh, the committee meeting. Recommendation committee meeting, yes. Yep. Yeah. 
So they're all there. I guess you're uh, happy with all of those to move them in bulk if uh, someone would like to do that. You'll see here there's that uh, uh, economy project, 7200, to engage Morris Piper consultants. Councillor Mulligan. Councillor Mulligan, yeah. Thank you. May I have a seconder? Councillor Smith. Put the motion. Any question on any of those things? If not, I have to rather speak about it. We'll do that later. I've got some on the screen. Um, so I'll put the motion in terms of I. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, October investment and rate collection report. Um, I can take any questions. It's the same standard monthly report. Um, we're sitting quite nicely at the moment. Interest rates are still going up, so you'll see next month we've locked in the next lot of investments at 4.25% from 4.1%. Um, which will show up next in next month's report. You're doing that every month? Right? Yes, we're rolling it every month, partly because it keep going, keeps right? going up yeah. and partly so we have the cash coming in every month of the yeah. the interest. I'd say that um, early next year go again. Yeah, so hopefully it will just continue. It's a bit monotonous, but it does yeah. give us that injection yeah, of cash every month. So yeah. here's the recommendation. The um, Thank you. Second day. Councillor Matthews, um, the 25 million grand total cash and investments. What the, so that, well, that makes that's what our cash at bank is at the moment. Yeah, but <laughs> 10 million of that is unexpended grant money that we have to hold over. But that, that's nice to have that in advance, though. It is, but the way that it's looked at from a financial perspective, it's not our money. It just sits in our bank. Yeah, but we're getting interest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's invested. That's why yeah, we're because yeah. we've also changed our bank account a few months ago. We changed it over to an, our original daily bank account. Didn't generate any interest. It was a non-interest account. We did get that change, so we're actually earning interest on the money that's in the, the yeah. general bank account as well now. So excellent. We had a further five point nine million dollars land yesterday for the regional road emergency repair fund, and the. Uh, deed at that states that we can bank that and we can accrue interest on it and we can that still has to be spent um, on uh, what the rest of the grant is, but they're quite happy for us to bank it. Is that the total figure that? 5.9, yeah. So we'll probably put that in an individual, it'll be a separate line, the 5.9 as a separate investment that will roll every month as well. Yeah. Yes. We haven't had that for a while, have we? Honestly. And rates are on track very much. Mm -hmm. Um, last year. Oh. Okay, so I'll get them now. We need them to yeah, yeah. So there's a recommendation there that uh, the report they received. Yeah, in a second, please. Councillor Mulligan, Councillor Egan, those in favour say aye. Aye. Okay. Councillor Activity Report for Notation Only. Um, someone moved the report they received. Yeah, Oh, you, did you get it? Yeah. I didn't have a look up. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Galvin, is it? Yeah. Smith. Oh, Smith, right. Okay, 8.4, child safety policy. Do you want to have just an explanation? I've actually asked Casey to come in because oh. she's deeply involved and I'll just give her a quick okay. yeah. This is something that's been mandated on local government. <clears throat> Can I just say at the conference, the speaker was Grace Tame, yeah. who was sexually assaulted, and then she's the um, citizen of the year, Australian of the year. She mm. is 21, and she was an amazing speaker. She kept sitting there. But one in five boys and one in three girls are sexually yeah. abused. Okay, see, this is just a child safe policy that the councillors wanted to ask some questions oh. about to start with. Yeah. Then the annual report. <laughs> Welcome, Casey. <laughs> Welcome. So I've asked Casey to come along because she's an expert in this area as well as our, and she pulled together our end report, which is yeah. one of the late items. Yes. So any questions you might have of Casey around the child safe policy or Casey might give you a spiel on why it's necessary. I'm sure you're wondering. I've just, I've just explained it's been mandated on the council uh, mm -hmm. to, to take this action. It has. Mm. So following a... Um, a reform. Basically, we have had 10 child safe standards that have become legislation that we as an organisation need to abide by. So 
every organisation, every local government will need to um, become a child safe organisation and there are a lot of policies, procedures, codes of conduct that we need to create and therefore abide by. We also need to, like our Section 355 committees, and help them to understand why they also need to adhere to these policies and procedures in certain circumstances. It won't be in every circumstance. Um, things like um, the Christmas carnivals, that kind of thing. If they have a stall, for example, where they are doing face painting or something like that, they need to be very aware of their obligations under the child safe legislation. If they are the Apex or the Lions Club, something like that, cooking a barbecue, serving them a sausage sandwich, having that minimal interaction, then yes, they need to be aware of them, but they don't need to abide by them as strictly as what someone who's working directly with a child or having an interaction directly with a child for an extended period. Now this is like a working with children well, certificate or something? No, uh, no. Uh, so there was, there was for a period of time yeah. um, the stigma that, every single person would need to get a working with uh, children so check. Right. We recently actually had a meeting with the Office of Children's Guardian because we were getting conflicting information yeah. and we went straight to the source and they are um, trying to guide people away from oh, that. Because that. So that was going to yep. be a great expense. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. and an ongoing one as yeah. well because mm -hmm. it would have been a pay working with children check yeah. um, and they're only valid for five years so mm -hmm. it would have been something that we would have to roll well, out and then continue. that's a development i hadn't heard about yeah, yes. that's good. yeah mm -hmm. so we have tweaked some policies in regards to that if it was noted in there that we were going to get all staff mm -hmm. have a working with children check we've now removed those sorts of things and it's it's more now if they're working directly with children um, as part of their role or say, for example, our building staff have to go into, when they put the new addition on the preschool, yeah, yeah. they got a working with children check to be able to so that's do a that. police check and, and it's, a, it's charged out, isn't it? It is yeah. charged. That's police check. It's uh, no it's working with children check. So you can get so a police who's... check and you can get a working with children okay. check. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. <clears throat> Right. Anything else there? Right. Is there any questions? No. Yeah, like I'll, I'll ask a question, Cassie. Look, I had a field of question during the week from a person who was holding a function. They were they couldn't believe the rigmarole they've got to go through now. Yeah. Uh, they were quite taken back, and they sort of said to me that, well, you know, because you wonder where you'd have a function. But I sort of said to them, I said, sort of, you know, it's thrown on the councils. You've got to do these sort of things. But I just sort of said, you know, the hardest bit's doing it the first time. And I sort of thought, uh, I sort of get she was liaising with somebody and they weren't quite sure and she was getting bombarded with things. I think probably what might have helped her was a checklist and say, right, if you're going to do something, this is these are the things, boxes you've got to tick before you yeah. can do it. I think that would have helped her out. Yeah, yeah. And maybe we can make that as part of the event management um, plan mm -hmm. is having those checklists. There will be um, education material and marketing and stuff like that because we actually have to... We have to make sure and work with our community to make sure that they understand what it is, what their role is under the legislation. Um, and it is basically all about protecting the children within our community. And if they see something that is not right, knowing what to do to be able to report that, whether it's go to the police, whether it's come to council as a child safe organisation, those kinds of things. So, so Casey, will that affect, um, you know, things like the Irish Festival, the Honey Festival? Is that going to have a... To a degree, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we will have, um, hopefully we'll have been able to do training and education around yeah. it prior to those events coming up. Um, all staff will be doing, and yourselves, will be doing a um, training module 
it's only about a 15 minute training module. Yeah, I was wondering about that because you know, yeah. I present certificates and things to the Willoughby kids now. Yes, yeah. And, yeah, and and that again is minimal interaction. Yeah. So it, it would be different if, say, you go away on the Willoughby exchange, mm. that's a different yeah. circumstance. Yeah. yeah. And Case, mm -hmm. with the Christmas carnival, yes. I went and got everything for the canteen, mm -hmm. and I've got to get whoever's in the canteen, I've got to get them to sign a form. Is that right? Because I've got all the paperwork. Is this to do a child? They can all sign the one. One sheet. Oh, yeah, okay. they can all sign the one sheet. Yeah, so okay. long as they're aware of what their responsibilities and their rights are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if they just read that page okay. and then they can all just sign the one sheet, return that back, and okay. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. But your, your responsibility is common human decency, isn't it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it is unfortunate mm -hmm. that we have to have a yeah. legislation yeah, in place right. for that. Right. Right. These are a great lot of, you know, I mean, is it out there? I don't, I don't know. that much. I have no idea. More than we know, I've had to go and get a working with children because I'm in legacy looking at yeah. brothers women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time that's the second time that they're going through. Yeah. 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 Because of the football to serve in the yeah. 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 I guess it makes people aware of that. Yeah. And it is, it's about creating it's a week. Just it's just yeah. well, you, you may be walking yeah. down the yeah. street and yeah. you wouldn't even think of it, and mm. then you do see something that's yeah. a little bit amiss, um, and that's that true. might prompt some kind of action that actually helps. Yeah, so it's, it's putting a responsibility for the general public. And there's that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child yeah. or a village to protect yeah. the perpetrator. So the same village has got responsibilities both ways. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Yeah. You know, I think there needs to be some clear guidelines about the reporting pathways. Yeah. It's It's <clears throat> been a bit of a difficult process. It is a difficult process. We also are receiving not clear guidance on what we need to do yeah. to be able to then inform the community yeah. and our staff. Yeah. So it, it's kind of it's us feeling our way yeah. at the moment as yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. 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 And every council in New South Wales is going through the same thing. Yeah. 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 So we did engage a um, external training provider who's helped us come up with uh, just a short training module which is interactive right. um, and we've just finalised that so we'll be rolling that out to people. So that'll yeah. come to a council meeting in the future and we'll do our training there. Yeah. Yeah. Do it all in a council meeting yeah, because be it is a 15, 20 minute video. Mm -hmm. So So Casey, so when does the when does the legislation come into it form? came into effect in February. So oh, it's, so it's actually it's actually in the so how long have we got to comply? Uh, twelve months. So February next year, but it is um, kind of a hand-holding process. So they will continue to work with us and and help us either tweak any policies or procedures that we need or if there are gaps in any policies or procedures, yeah. then they'll help us. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Well, I think we, we can, we're well enough informed now to consider the recommendation policy be received. Oh. I'm going to move that way. Councillor Dixon and... Councillor Matthews, second. Uh, thanks, Casey, for your explanation. Do you want to jump to the annual report while Casey's here? Yeah, we might do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, I'll put this. Um, those in favour say aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, and with the permission, we will do that. Casey's here and she's going to give an explanation of the annual report or whatever. So, go on that. Casey. Oh, it's all right, Ali. Oh. Annual report. Annual report. We'll go straight on you that. Just want to Am I just showing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it is um, at the moment it is incomplete, yeah. but that's because our audited financial statements yeah. haven't been received yet. So to meet our IPNR requirements, we need to have this to the council meeting and then forwarded to the OLG by the 30th of November. Yeah. So we'll do that today. And then when the financial statements are audited, it will all come back to council and we'll resubmit to the OLG. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, recent information.
information in here that will change. But it's basically that's just our spiel. It tells, tells you all about Council itself and about the integrated planning and reporting framework and how it relates to everything that Council should be doing. To break it down into corporate terms, you can... So that's interesting. You can um, basically call them our business plans. Some statistics on our... Basically, you take comments on it. I can. Just way back at the start there, in your map, you didn't have North Star on it. Whoops. Yep, noted. Thank you. I was there yesterday. The map doesn't have North Star. <laughs> oh, have nothing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> where, where is it? <laughs> it was there yesterday. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't sell it, did you? <laughs> That's a classic case of things being reused over and over again because I've never picked that up. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so these are our goals, basically. So our goal um, is based off the social justice principles. And from these, we have identified council's key objectives and outcomes, and from that, we produce actions um, that we would like to complete each year. And all of those actions are fed from our CSP, which is our Community Strategic Plan. And that's a plan, a 10-year plan that the community develops and council just acts as caretakers for that plan. And you as councillors then determine from that what you think that council can realistically achieve during your term and that then forms what's called our delivery program and then that is a four-year plan. Yeah, the term of council. Mm. The term of council and it's broken down into 12-month brackets yeah. over your term and that is in effect our operational plan and that's what we commit to each year to try and achieve as well as our business as usual. And from those, the annual reports generated. So it's basically highlighting what we have been able to achieve in that 12-month period. And Casey, if you read the general manager's comments at the beginning of this report, yes, um, he's, he's so right in that we've achieved so much of these goals already. Uh, the 10 year plan, we've got so much done that we never ever thought we would. No. Yeah. And a lot of that is thanks to the grant funding yeah, that we've exactly. yeah, been yeah, yeah. able to get. Yeah. Um, and it just, I mean, a lot of the things some might say were a bit pie in the sky kind of dreams yes. in the community strategic plan. But if we didn't have them in there, Mm. we may not have been able to get funding to be able to do them. So. I, re I remember when we went out to our community, when we were doing the con consultation for the community strategic plan, I was jotting down the wants and the needs and the aspirations of the communities thinking, oh, like that's going to happen. Or, you know, yeah, my inner it, voice was saying, say. yeah, you know, how could we possibly do that? And then the raining down of funding and it's been quite heartening to see uh, yeah. the things we have achieved that yeah. we never at that time would, thought, would think was possible. Yeah, they need to be, and they will be recorded and produced because, you know, you get that used to these things and mm. you think they've been there forever. But, the end of term report, yeah. your end of term yeah. report will People certainly will be a, a, good, yeah. a good summary and yeah. the one before that. Yeah, yeah. So none of this information is correct. So I will omit these pages from... Um, the submission to the Office of Local Government just because they are last year's audited financial statement figures. And that's the same with this page as well. Yep. And we have our flood report, which I'm sure Alex has spoken about. Current funded work. So I thought a visual representation of what projects and where they've been completed might be a little bit easier to follow than a whole lot of words, but please tell me if you prefer the words. Uh, 
So the recommendation for this item is that the re policy or the report be received. Yes. And it will be resubmitted to the council once we receive our statements. So these are just all of our section 355 committees. They provide us with a little bit of a snapshot as to what they've achieved through the year as well. And then it goes into each department. Each department then provides a bit of a spiel as to what they've achieved and what they've done throughout the year. Basically, are the 355 committees obligated to give an annual report to council? Yes. Right. And that forms part of this. So these are all our department reports and down the bottom we then have our statutory reporting which consists of donations, any private works that we've done. Overseas trips. Overseas trips, council or expenses, training and development. Some new things um, like our anti-slavery statement is now in there. That's become oh, slavery. Oh, I think the gas has fallen into that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just, to, this part here is our statutory reporting requirement for the annual report. Gives a breakdown of any senior staff, any contracts, that we have entered into during the reporting period that exceed 150,000. The importance of this document can't be understated because it's used as a comparison with other councils and often reported on in the media, which you may remember um, happened to council once. Okay. So happy to accept that. Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor Coleman. Maybe the adoption of the report or oh, is that the right way? I mean, the policy be received. Should be report be received. Yeah, okay. The second one, Councillor Egan. Any questions of Casey while she's there? Thanks, Casey. We'll probably all have a good read of this um, later. <laughs> but, um, Thank you. Uh, we've got a move and a second. I'll put the motion in favour. Aye. 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 Um, page public interest disclosure. Oh, I'm did that. Page 57, public interest right. disclosure policy. Yep. Justin might be able to answer any questions you've got. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, is there a question or would you like to, uh, to give us a bit of an outline, Justin? Um, I was actually hoping Casey would talk to this one. <laughs> Let's put this together. Oh, okay. Do you want to grab oh, it? Oh, we can grab it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it had your name on it, so. Oh, does it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> 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 so, we got an outline, Casey, on this. Yes. Um, so this one again is new legis or amended legislation that's been brought in, um, and there will also be training involved in that. But it's basically um, a model policy that's been provided by the ombudsman, um, and we need to adopt that policy to encourage and support those people who 
you want to or need to um, report any wrongdoing by whether it's a councillor or a staff member. As in bullying or? Uh, no, as in um, it's like whistleblowing, yeah, oh, yeah. corruption. Oh, okay. well, I hope we don't have any of that. Yeah. Has there been any uh, examples of that? Like, I know. Not that I'm aware of here. Uh, yeah. um, but that's not to say that an anonymous. Yeah, oh, just to get us. Get us been, idea but I'm sure people would have. Sure, shouldn't be done. Uh, yeah. So basically, the policy is a, a requirement of the legislation that we need to have. And I've just um, gone through and um, tweaked the policy so that it's relevant or as relevant as I think it can be. So to it's given a show. Yeah, yeah, they provided that model yeah. model template. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. Is there any questions or Casey on this one? Busy. <laughs> it's all it's frightening, really, isn't it? Uh, what you're letting yourself in for, really? Yeah, we have to keep passing because it's If you took it, um, uh, I'd, I'd be very disappointed if our council had an ink like this, but then you have a framework if something happens. Yeah. All right, thank you, Casey. I'll uh, ask call for a moment then with a recommendation. Councillor Mulligan, second of Councillor Moore. I want to do the road naming as well. <laughs> Let's make that one. I can't answer. Hey, that one. I can't answer. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got an annual report. Moving a signal. I'll put the motion that in place. Say, hey, let's take it. Item 8.6. This is right. Naming the Gary Lane Oriel Rail. See in front of you. Um, and, uh, Page 83. I think uh, it's the. Uh, it's the parish of Bulgaria. Yes. yes. Justin, do you want to offer any information? Just have um, a question. Yeah, as far as I know, there's just the one resident that's on this lane that put in the request earlier in the year. Um, Danny's taken the geographical names board for advice, and yeah, it looks like we've just got to get it endorsed by council and we can get that assistance to the GMB. I was a bit astounded to read that. The Royal Rail was only gazetted as a name in 1975. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. I mean, the, there was a school there, it was called Bagaria School, but it's the parish of Bagaria. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't realise that they were called Kelly's Gully or Royal Rail. Royal Rail, as long as I remember. Thank you, and I love you. Well, the gully running through it is Kelly's It's Kelly's Gully. So it was always Kelly's Gully. We were going to the gully. The gully. The gully. It was always the gully. And the gully pass. The gully pass. So now Tom wants to be the man who's this. Is there any objection or any discussion? All right, I'll move it then, please. All right, thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor Mulligan, second that, uh, that, um, that we approve the naming of Laneway for Gary Lane. Okay, I put the most names in place, say aye. Aye. Okay. Now I can do um, Councillor report. Is this confirmation? Is that going to be confirmation? No, general okay. purpose. All right, so we're going to the late, last of the late course, which is 6.2, presentation of clients. Right? This is what we did the other night. Yes. Um, Do you want it up on the screen? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to put it. Everyone should have the, the late report anyway. It'll be easier to flip through on your iPad than it probably will be um, up on the screen. But this is just our standard financial reports for the 2023 financial year. They are currently in their final stages with the auditors, we hope. Um, and we should have it submitted by the before Christmas. Unfortunately, I have requested, we requested our extension to the ORG. I still have not received a response from them to say whether we do or we don't have an extension. Um, and I have requested that again and still got nothing. So we're working on, at the moment, we do have the extension, but there's not much else we can do. Well, that's very frustrating because they write to us, it has to be immediate. I know. Yeah. And twice now I've emailed them to say that I haven't received a response and I haven't even received a response no, to that. that. Yeah. So um, at this stage we don't believe there will be any material changes to what is being presented to council. 
um, I will have to get the mayor and deputy mayor to sign. Um, we normally have a, the order of foresight here before the end, before Christmas, don't we? Yes, they're normally, well, yeah. November, December so, usually they come, yeah. so that won't happen until probably February yeah. now, if they even come do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so... Did you want to draw attention to any part of this? Or? Um, I, I, there's nothing in there that's so, of concern. Can we go to the ratios then and look at yep. that? Page 75. I always think this gives you an idea how you travel. Yeah. And it's been skewed with all of And unfortunately for this financial year, as in the last couple of years, they make it, we don't hit very many. I know a few years ago we were quite impressed with ourselves because we did hit four of the six. Um, but I think with what we're achieving, the ratios mean very little compared to what we're actually physically achieving through council in projects. We've had so much grant funding, it's skewed yes. the ratios. But unfortunately, you're judged by yes. OLG on your ratios, aren't you? Yes. But I'm not saying that's worrying me in one little bit. No. Whenever we're building stuff, it's good. It's and at the ARIC committee meeting, these were presented to the ARIC committee meeting and they, they approved them. Um, so those minutes will come to the next month's council meeting. Um, and our chair was the same. He doesn't hold a lot of stock in the ratios either when council is flush with grant funding to achieve all the projects that we did think were pie in the sky that we now actually have achieved and still achieving. There's a hand up there somewhere. Did you have that? Uh, any questions on this? I know you've only just got this. Um if you have any questions, I'm happy to, to reply or with any answers that I can provide. We still have to meet all these sustainability type the the future. That's what they judge us on. And, you know, at every state or federal conference, there's a call from the crowd from the participants to get them changed so they're yeah. relevant across yeah. the board yeah. and nothing ever happens. So, you know, it's very, uh, they're very important, I'm sure, to some, but they're not that relevant to our council. And the, the, the changes to the accounting standards the last few years, every year our statements are actually getting further and further from what I personally believe is a true and accurate look at councils. I mean, you look at those ratios, it's saying we're not, we're not doing that great, but we've also posted a $13 million profit for the financial year. So <laughs> it's mm. it, depending on what page you want to take as your gospel, you can you can swing it either way. And that's skewed by depreciation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And the way we have to treat treat income now as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, depending on what story you want to tell, you can pick particular bits out of the statements now and I think you should all be very pleased with the way we're going and take no notice of the ratio. Uh, but, uh, we, we know what we're doing and, and we are improving the living standard of our residents in our shire enormously in the last few years. And we're not getting complaints from our residents. So and I've well, had a lot of comments like that. But they, <laughs> and if you have any doubt about that, go back to your annual report to see everything that's been achieved and compare yeah. that to 10 to 8 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Now, when I first came on council, there was times when we didn't know how we were going to pay, pay the outdoor staff right up the end of the financial year. We were waiting for the grant to come. And we haven't had seen that for a while now. Uh, We've been fortunate with the grants we've received, but there's a little bit, a little bit of management in that too. We've gone looking for them. Yeah. It comes from the top end, doesn't it? How things have been managed. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's only ever as good as the like a school's who's its headmaster, yeah. basically. And well, it shows you what a job they've there. Uh, our senior. Our senior team is doing. That's right. Yeah. Just keep saying no to graders. <laughs> Don't pump them up too much, Tim. <laughs> Did you see how oh, it was, though, Helen? <laughs> um, I just wanted that on record, that's all. <laughs> there's a pretty fair list of recommendations going with this. Yeah. Which are all legislative. Yeah. So somebody prepared to move. Good morning, I'll get a jacket on. Report to be received, I should say. Thank you, Councillor Dalton.
I'll second over that. That's just report. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Got you on the book. <clears throat> Any questions? I know it's a very complex thing to be sitting here and passing, but as uh, Helen said, a internal revenue, internal audit committee went through it last week, and uh, and we were all happy with it. We looked at it, examined it pretty closely. And if, if by any chance there are any material changes that have to be made, it does have to come back to council anyway. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I got to move in a second, or I'm sure. Yes. You yeah. did. I'll put the motion then, those in favour. Okay. Thank you. And we have item six point one, which is supposed to be before that one, is the September quarterly review. Oh, so I can take any questions. There weren't a lot, a great deal of changes to the September quarterly review because of being so early on in the financial year. Um, we did have an exact meeting the other day, and we're going to January. We'll be spent going through um, the salaries and wages and a few other high cost items to make sure that our December six month mark is as accurate as we possibly can get it for the last half of the financial year. Um, I don't think there's anything. The biggest change was the inclusion of the potential purchase of land by council at some point during the financial year and the um, development at the Warialda Vic that got approved at council last month or the month yeah, before. Yeah. Um, other than that, there's the list of all our major contract payments that we've made. In the first quarter listed there, um, our consultancy and legal fees that were all included in the budget, they're all still under budget for the year, so um, other than that. Okay. I need a favour of the recommendation. Oh, questions if there's any. Uh, did you bid then, Councillor Smith? I did bid. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Councillor Smith moved, seconded. Somewhere. Councillor Mulligan, those in favour say aye. Okay. We're going to go to Councillor Reports and giving in mind if you have something that you prefer to speak about in the confidential assessment, you're free to do that. I'll start with you, Councillor Colton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, went to the um, Historical Society meeting the uh, other night. Their Christmas dinner, but uh, just as a follow up to that, they've placed another series of plaques at the cemetery oh, yeah. over, over the last weekend. But they have did that, so that's about all I've got. What are, what are they? Uh, I shouldn't know. They're they're, graves, are they? well, I, I don't know whether they're uh, graves or headstones that have become illegible yeah, or just yeah. exactly what they are, but yeah. they're. Uh, some didn't have anything on them. Yeah, some yeah. didn't have anything on them, and they've gone through and identified a lot, and then they they just cleared them up. I forget what there was. This there was a heck of a lot of them anyway that they've already lot. done, but there's a hell of a lot that still left to do. Yeah, right. And so they're sort of poking along doing that as I think they get them. Okay. Council actually provides funding for that to happen. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, I had a North Star yesterday with Lyndon. Uh, good, good roll up, good day, excellent. Um, but a question to Alex, really. Alex, do we own the, does Council own the stock, or I call it stock rate, but it's, um, does Council own the road from the Yellowroy Hall back to the Rock Hall Terminal? Um, I will check and confirm there is stock route in that area and there's also some Crown land. The, the, there's a bit of a problem there with uh, Murray Woods and Ben D about having stock travel down there. They might they want them to go down to Copper Creek and then back up past Rockwell. Um, and, and Murray was telling me yesterday that we council actually owns the road and they they have to say as whether whether stock travel there can travel down there or not. There's certainly been no approach that I'm aware of from um, uh, either landholders or LLS mm. to move stock um, in that area. Yeah. Uh, I don't see that there's any reason that we would uh, decline a request. Um, if, not if, a, yeah. if they were moving stock and not roadside grazing. Uh, but can I uh, yeah, yeah, have no, a no, dig no, in? No, he's moving stock. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in you know, our experience with RV Gore Road, we had no sales. Well, that's, that's right. right. That's a, uh, we have absolutely no sales council. Yeah. It, it's the PP board that does the sales. Yeah, well, the PP board said, I've got control of all these I do, areas. Apparently. But I was under the impression of what Murray was telling me yesterday was council actually owns that section of the road through there. Yeah, so um, what the man's saying is still correct if. Uh, the stock of travelling or less can grant the approval for that. Yeah. Uh, if they want to do any roadside grazing, that's where council has to issue concurrence. And it is only concurrence in that case, yeah. too. It's not if, the yeah. approval. If the landholders reject it, doesn't you that, know, that they don't even get a say. And the reason I know this is we had a request from owners along the IB Bore Road. Uh, as you would know, a lot of it's not fenced anymore. And they were concerned about stock coming through. They can only be travelling stock, they're not grazing. Yeah. But you can't stop them, you can't keep them on the road. Yeah. And and we did a lot of research into this, a lot of frustration, but it comes back down to the ranger. So, so is he talking about the road that goes from Rockwell down to Proper or the no, road? No, from Mellory Hall back to the Rockwell. Oh, the so that's, so that's the main road. It's the Benjamin, yeah, yeah, on the yeah, main road. Yeah, well, oh, right, North Star Road. Right. Yeah, okay. So North Star Road. I always assumed that was stock route either side. The, the road would no, be, the, the road not. would only be a certain. Oh yeah, we don't width. know much of it. No. But the, the the thing is that we've been into this, and it's entirely up to people. Yeah. And, and the, the reaction we got was yes, they would consult the landholders along the road. Yeah. But I don't think that in that case was still fenced. Yeah. So I think it just happened. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's just a question. You said, yeah, oh, well, I, I was only impressed it was all stock route, but it's not, obviously. Uh, no. Yeah. No, we're talking the, um, you know, the Warriata North Star mm -hmm. Road, um, not stock route at all. Yeah, right. right. Is that it? Not anymore? But no, uh, another thing was um, I thought Malcolm Dolan was going to flobber his chest over there, didn't he? <laughs> but, but he walked up and he said, He'd be patting on the back. Got to congratulate the Shire and the staff and the job they're doing up there, he said it. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. He's getting a bit of that. Yeah, he gets a bit of a road very sick. What um, road is that? Get to get you got to get a road. Right. Yeah. Did he mention that I own a six pack because I lost the bet that we'd be finished by the end of October? <laughs> no, <laughs> but at the end of Christmas. He said he wasn't happy about it. There, apparently, there's a gap in the basement there somewhere. Yeah. He said he's not happy about that. He said it's just a fair gap, isn't it? <laughs> he said it should have been all done in one end. He said. Right. And he said, and what was the other thing he said? He said, oh, does the thickness of that thing going to hold up? He said, <laughs> the same, the I said same, you'll so. probably get another coat, a bigger gravel on it shortly, I'd say. I don't know, anyway. Yeah. No, he said, it's, 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 it's pretty happy though. Really good out that way. He said, everybody yeah. really happy about it. Yeah. yeah. The other last thing. No, that's about it. Thank you. No, no, I've got nothing. Yeah, well, Matthews, you've been back long enough to have something. <laughs> the... At our board meeting the other day, we our the board uh, the, the board of the Bingra community practice yes. discussed the need for doctor accommodation. Okay, and there was a suggestion that maybe the current house could be in some way subdivided so that it could be two people's accommodation, okay. uh, and suggested that I bring that up with council. The other, the other suggestion was that when they're completed, perhaps the, the units up at the living classroom, one of those could be used short term for doctor accommodation. Right. Well, I saw all that recorded. We'll go to senior staff. Anything else? Nothing else. Councillor Mulligan? Uh, just uh, what I was saying before with Casey, I just had a phone call from somebody who's frustrated about this, you know, working with children. Yeah, yeah. Sort of, you know, and I, and I gather there's a work in progress and there's a little bit uncertain about what's got to happen, but it was just this person was very frustrated. They've got to keep doing more first aid certificates and working with children <laughs> and going on and on and on. So I, think, I guess it's just, a, you know, they need to have that spiel ready to say when somebody does have a function, well, this is actually what you've actually got to do. And I said, and that's probably the hardest bit of understanding what you've got to do. Yeah, I think that's a very good idea. Is that the Christmas carols? It is. Yeah. We had a letter. Did you? Yeah. So we'll address that. Yeah, uh, and I think it's, and I get it's just the, you know, the council's a little bit frustrated that there's no one's going to be too, and they are too, and I, I just sort of felt that tension between them there a little bit. And because it's a Section 355 committee, we also have to jump through the hoops of our insurer. Yeah. And they're getting tighter and tighter with what they expect from us as a. 
yeah, as a kid. I guess it's just the expectation of somebody goes to heaven to bet this is what you've actually got to do. Yes, yes. Mm. I wouldn't have thought Christmas carols was a very uh, risky, risky event. Well, that's right, John, but the trouble is one of the schools are singing a few carols and all of a sudden you, you, you've got, you know, the, the whole committee's got authority over the school, but no. then the school's got to have its own insurance because... You know, they're coming in the hall and just get going on and on. Well, we're living. And that's what I tried to say. Unfortunately, that's losing the sign of the times. Yeah. Uh, on another note, I went to a real fire service meeting in uh, Cropper there the other day where they came from Narrabri and had a bit of a day and actually Carl was there. I didn't yep. get the chance to say that, but I was sort of, um, it was just, you know, the Rockwell fire. So I was, was trying to see what we could, you know, what the real fire service could do better. Uh, regards obviously communication because the next thing was going to be as interesting before you talk about the police locking the doors because if that fire kept on going the next thing was going to happen was cool the time was going to get door locked and told to shift on because right. the fire was at that one pretty quickly yeah. but uh, but uh, you know and i think it was uh, you know, trying to sort out the communication and, and the process is doing what uh, probably was maybe it's, i don't know the whole process might be a little bit wanting but they're certainly they're trying to engage and trying to make the process better if something ever happened again but yeah, you know, I did take one thing. I did take is they were really uh, pleased about the uh, the council about what actions they were able to buy, provide our know, graders and whatnot. And they were, I think they were very thankful that that was the fire came out because of the assistance of the council. So I think that's very good. I think the communication thing needs addressing because the, all the landholders are on UHF and then. The RFS has got their own system. Well, look, no, Channel 5 and it was highlighted, it was never really got out there because the, the trouble was, was a lot of uh, peat farmers have got tankers and that sort of thing, yeah. but they never knew how to communicate with anybody else. Uh, that's They'd be talking amongst themselves when the RFS came back and said, no, we we're always on ta Channel 5, which is a dedicated line okay. to them. Oh. And so that was the take home, basically, that you know, need to get on Channel 5 mm. and talk to the people and keep it succinct, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it needed to get out there and nobody knew that. Yeah, was, in the past, it's been the, where the fire is, that land was channel. That's yeah. where and that's probably where the confusion yeah. lies, John, yeah. and it's probably something, you know, to be a little bit proactive yeah. getting mm. around the place there yeah. on Channel 5. Okay. On that one there, the, 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 client, the air planes were the biggest... No way in the world we would have got that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that also highlighted too, Jeff, is the fact that there's plenty of airstrips around the place and there's, and you know, farmers have usually got water tanks beside them, but mm. they're not sort of approved sort of by the RFS no, yeah. to actually be able to. I think to they ended up before that they were going back to Moree. That's right, fill because up. that was where yeah. they were, that's where they place they could yeah. go to to, come, to fill up and come back, which takes what, about 40 minutes to get there. Better come to Moree, I well, once again, they didn't know that, John. No, it's 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 still here. Yeah, it's it's right. And that's this whole communication thing. Yeah. Right? It's just yeah. it's sort of there's holes in it that they need to fix up, and I think that was what the, the yeah. chat was about. What like. area of crop was lost? It was back at Rockwell there. No, I know. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, they did say. It was yeah, I think it was about... Um, I think it was about 3,000 acres. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Big loss. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Councillor Dixon. Yes, what's the hold up with the houses at the living classroom? What are we up to and how long before they'll be open? Um, I understand it's an electricity supply mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not completely sure, but we'll send around an email that says exactly what's happening and what's planned so you all know. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. So the ones here are being done now. Yeah. That any, that's, okay. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right. You finished, Cassidy? Yep. Yep. Mr. Garland? Can't let you think I don't have anything. <laughs> oh, I never thought I had it. <laughs> um, no, someone from Horton actually needed to know a couple of questions. You know the grant that they got for the toilets and showers, how far away are they? I don't have an answer to that one, or I'm not even sure who's looking after it. But um, oh, you know, Collins, Collins, oh, Collins, yeah, yeah. Is it? I'm not looking after. I'll probably give you an update because um, Coop sent me some photos the other day. Andrew Coop was dealing with that, and I think they're nearly completed in the factory. So um, my understanding is I think they're coming from Victoria, so they've got to be freighted up here, and then obviously they'll have to put in place, build a ramp, um, and do that. So they, I think they're nearly completed in the factory. They're much the same as the ones near the pool, aren't they, in Bingra? Um, they're a colour bond looking building. They're a fairly basic building. It's a rectangular with like four doors on them, I think. But yeah, it's, um, it's a colour bond building and that's, I haven't seen inside them. But Coop just sent me some external photos. So they should, I can tell them they shouldn't be long? They shouldn't be too far away, I wouldn't have thought. They looked pretty much complete 
from the photos of Cooper's sent me, and that was like yesterday, I think, yesterday or what we okay. um, should say. Yeah. Next, maybe. and then, oh, sorry, sorry. Next, are we ready to have them <coughs> on the ground? That I don't buy. That I don't know because mm -hmm. yeah, Coops Coops managing the process and can you I was get, looking at one of them. Can you find out for me about it it before their new so we know before their new year? Alex is finding out now. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, the oh, uh, auction day. Yeah, and yeah. the other thing is, um, they because it's a different committee out there from now, from what I can gather, and they were going to write a grant or something to try and get the cricket pitch fixed up, but. Someone was under the understanding that was also in a grant that they got a while ago and it hasn't been done. Can you find out about that for me, please? Certainly can. Thank you. Okay. So, you. That's you. Thank you. Can I um, Yeah, I'm going to be mine. Yes, because just one thing I forgot. What's happening with the court out there? Are they going to use it or? I have no idea. Adam no. Marshall keeps saying yes, but okay. there's no sign of that. Of course, I don't know. It's going to I'd be very surprised in seven years again. Could I ask Colin a question? The yes. toilets are you under the the toilets and that of the gully? Are they under the same? Yeah, they're under the from the country country community down around five, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, there has been a bit of delay on it, but we're on now. Actually, I just met a plumber out there um, to look at the on-site sewage management system, and we met the committee out there last week to discuss what work they wanted to do with any funds remaining from putting the building in, but we haven't secured the building yet. We have a quote from uni plan um, that Carmen had got, but obviously because it's over $25,000, our procurement plan says we need to get three quotes. So I've just got to get the remaining two quotes. Um, but yeah, we've met with the committee, talked them out there, they're happy. Um, yeah, so we've got a bit of direction. They want to do a bit of concreting and put some picnic shelters in and a table and everything out there. So there is progress, yeah. Thank you. Right. Let's end on that. Um, so now we need to go into the committee of a whole, of the whole. Um, so we'd like to move that way. We're going to the case of Put the motion as a vote to aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, now I need a member to, to move the recommendations to the general meeting. Adoption of the recommendations of the confidential section recommendation that the following recommendations are adopted. Naming of Nicholson Oval amenities or fields. That the proposal to name the Nicholson Oval amenities building after Noel Pillen be placed on public display for 21 days for public comment. Um, quotation for the demolition of buildings 33 to 35 Maitland Street, Bingra. The Council award Crawford Constructions Moree the demolition of Bingra Administration Building for the sum of 326,581, excluding GST, um, without providing, without inviting tenders using provisions of Section 55 of the Local Government Act. Given the extenuating circumstances that a request for tender process would delay the construction of the replacement building by at least three months, resulting in additional interest payments on funds borrowed for the construction of approximately $87,000. Further, that Council decline the quotation from Hennessy Construction and Demolition to the value of $468,327.45. Sense um, exclusive of GST. <laughs> uh, can I remember that those uh, items be included back on the agenda? Thank you, Councillor. I'll go, Councillor Matthews. Yeah, Councillor, who was it? Mulligan. Thank you. Well, the motion hasn't passed. No, 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 no,